So now let me discuss the drugs which are used in the treatment of Parkinsonism. Now if you see this Parkinsonism, this is one of the neurodegenerative disorder. Right? So Parkinsonism, this is one of the neurodegenerative disease. This is a very very important point. Now, so what is the characteristic features of this particular neurodegenerative disease? Remember the Parkinsonism is the disorder which is characterized by decrease in the dopamine levels within the basal ganglia and this Parkinsonism this is one of the extra pyramidal disorder right this is one of the extra pyramidal disorder and the very important thing is it is characterized by decrease in the dopamine within the basal ganglia decrease in the dopamine in the basal ganglia next the other important point is like what will be the characteristic features remember this particular parkinsonism it is characterized by the presence of rigidity akinesia right which is also called as bradykinesia that is nothing but the slowness of movements bradykinesia and as well as the presence of tremors and the type of tremors here what we have is the resting tremors so these three are very important features the presence of rigidity bradykinesia and as well as tremors now apart from these the other two important manifestation is the gait so in these individuals they will have an unstable gait and the name of the gait in these patients we call this as the festinate gait right the name of the gait what we call it as is called as the festinate gait and even the postural reflexes right the postural reflexes they are also impaired so there is loss of postural reflexes due to which they will have unstable gait as well and lastly if you see the face of individuals they will have what is called as the mask like faces right they'll have what is called the mask like faces so remember parkinsonism this is one of the extra pyramidal disorder and it is a neurodegenerative disease and the very important feature is it is characterized by decrease in the dopamine levels within the basal ganglia the important features in these patients are rigidity bradykinesia and as well as tremors and they have an unstable gait which is called as the festinate gait and even the postural reflexes they are also lost that will make the individual to have an unstable gait and the other important thing is there is no expressions in their face which is called as the mask like faces now so like there are many etiologies for the parkinsonism but the the pathophysiology is decrease in the dopamine within the basal ganglia now what is parkinson's disease right what is parkinson's disease if the cause for the parkinsonism is not known then that is called as parkinson's disease all right so idiopathic parkinsonism right idiopathic parkinsonism this is called as parkinson's disease right idiopathic parkinsonism this is called as the parkinson's disease now now what actually is the problem in these patients with the parkinsonism remember in the basal ganglia the output neurons they are controlled by the dopamine 
and as well as the acetylcholine. So, this is the basal ganglia. The output neurons, they are controlled by dopamine and as well as the another neurotransmitter which is called as acetylcholine. So, both of them, this particular dopamine and as well as acetylcholine, both of them, they have the opposite action. Right, both of them, they have opposite action. So, due to their opposite action, what is required? The very important thing is, the balance is required between these two neurotransmitters. So, because both of them, they have opposite action, what is very much required is, the balance is required between these two neurotransmitters for the proper functioning of the basal ganglia. Now, if there is any imbalance between these two, right, if there is any imbalance between these two, then that will result in what is called as the Parkinsonism. So, due to their opposite action, remember, a balance is required between these two neurotransmitters for proper functioning of the basal ganglia. Now, if you exactly take the pathophysiology of these patients with the Parkinsonism, what exactly is happening here? Now remember this particular dopamine, it is being synthesized within the substantia nigra of the basal ganglia. Now basal ganglia, it has the following parts, right? It has the caudate nucleus, it has putamen and then you, you have the substantia nigra, then you have subthalamic nucleus of lice. So caudate nucleus, putamen, substantia nigra, subthalamic nucleus of lice, these are the parts within the basal ganglia. Now here, remember, it is within the substantia nigra of the basal ganglia, there is degeneration of the neurons, right? There is degeneration of the neurons. Now what are these neurons? They are nothing but the nigrostriatal tract, right? So if you take this particular dopamine, right, this dopamine, it is formed by nigrostriatal pathway right which is called as dopaminergic pathway right nigrostriatal pathway which is also called as dopaminergic pathway so in these patients with the parkinsonism what is happening is there is degeneration of this particular nigrostriatal pathway which is nothing but the dopaminergic pathway now, where is this particular nigrostriatal pathway or the dopaminergic pathway? Remember, this is present within the substantia nigra. Right? This is present within the substantia nigra. So, what is happening within the Parkinsonism? In the Parkinsonism, there is degeneration of... So, in Parkinsonism, there is degeneration of the substantia nigra. Alright? So... Because of the degeneration of the substantia nigra, there is degeneration of the nigrostriatal pathways, which is nothing but the dopaminergic pathway. This will result in the dopamine deficiency. Right? Both of this will result in decrease in the dopamine levels. Right? Both of them, they will result in the decrease in the dopamine levels. So, this is the pathophysiology. Now, now, the another important point what you should remember here is in the pathophysiology, there is an imbalance now, right? There is an imbalance between the dopamine and as well as the acetylcholine. So, what is happening is, if you see here, so this will be the imbalance. If you take the acetylcholine levels, they are increased, whereas if you take the dopamine levels, they are decreased in these patients. Right? Acetylcholine levels, they are increased. Whereas, if you take the dopamine levels, they are decreased. So, you take this particular acetylcholine. The acetylcholine, this is a excitatory neurotransmitter. Right? This is the excitatory neurotransmitter. Whereas, the dopamine, this is the inhibitory neurotransmitter. Right? This is the inhibitory neurotransmitter. So now there is an imbalance between these two. 
right there is an imbalance between these two what is happening the dopamine levels they are decreased and acetylcholine levels they are increased so imbalance primarily between the excitatory neurotransmitter acetylcholine and inhibitory neurotransmitter dopamine is occurring within the basal ganglia now the another major pathology in parkinsonism is the decrease in the dopaminergic neurons now what exactly is the pathology like why there is degeneration of this particular the dopaminergic neurons why because because of the deposition of an inclusion bodies which are called as levi bodies right so here there is deposition of the inclusion bodies which are called as the levi bodies so because of the deposition of this particular the levi bodies that is causing the degeneration of the dopaminergic pathway and resulting in decrease in the dopamine all right so normally what should happen or what will be there in a normal individual the dopamine and as well as acetylcholine they are in a balanced manner so that is why the basal ganglia is functioning properly but here because of the deposition of the levi bodies within the nigrostriatal pathway there is decrease in the dopamine and thereby the acetylcholine it dominates right thereby the acetylcholine it dominates thus the two major strategies for the treatment of parkinsonism are to increase the dopamine and decrease the central cholinergic activity so in the treatment part what we have to do is what we have to look for or what we have to do what we have to do you increase the dopamine or you decrease the acetylcholine and thereby this particular symptoms they get corrected right so let me summarize like what i have taught until now parkinsonism remember this is one of the extra pyramidal disorder and this is a neurodegenerative disease and this is the disorder which is characterized by decrease in the dopamine levels within the basal ganglia and this parkinsonism it is characterized by rigidity akinesia and as well as tremors and these individuals they also have unstable gait and as well as impaired postural reflexes and if you take the face of these individuals they have an expressionless face which is called as the mask like faces now idiopathic parkinsonism is called as parkinson's disease and parkinsonism or the parkinson's disease is basically the disease of the basal ganglia normally the basal ganglia neuronal output it is maintained by the dopamine and as well as acetylcholine and both of them they have opposite action and because they have the opposite action a balance is maintained between these two to see that the basal ganglia functions properly but in these patients with the uh, parkinsonism there is degeneration of the nigrostriatal pathway which is present within the substantia nigra of the basal ganglia so why is that degeneration is mainly because of the accumulation of the levi bodies within the nigrostriatal pathway so thereby what will happen is the dopamine level reduces so relatively there will be increase in the acetylcholine so in the treatment strategies what you have to do is you have to try to increase the dopamine and decrease the acetylcholine so all that group of drugs which i will be discussing will be the group of drugs which will be increasing the dopamine and the decreasing the acetylcholine